Hi, I'm Sarah Jordan, historical archaeologist with the White Mountain National Forest. Did you know that people have lived and worked in the forest of the White Mountains for more than 10,000 years? By the 1830s, agriculture in the area was at its height, and many towns reached their peak populations with farms and villages scattered throughout the hills and valleys. Can you guess what percentage of the forest had been cleared of trees by that time? Is it 20 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent, or 80 percent? As you spend time in the forest campgrounds and on the trails, you are the most recent link in a 10,000 year chain of forest explorers and dwellers. Signs of these earlier visitors and inhabitants are visible throughout the White Mountain National Forest. As you visit the lower falls of the Amanusik River, imagine Native American people fishing with nets and spears at the falls, camping nearby, and interacting with other Abenaki people on nearby rivers. Stop by the Russell Colbath House on today's busy Kankamagas Highway and imagine life 200 years ago on what was a remote family farm. Many such farms once spread among the valleys of the White Mountains and flourished for a brief period before economic, social, and technological changes led to their abandonment in the period after the Civil War. As you drive towards the mountains, imagine yourself as a wealthy Bostonian in the 1890s, catching a train to one of the many luxurious Grand Hotels. Or picture the early trampers of the late 19th century, blazing new hiking trails, naming new peaks, and constructing bark shelters to spend the night on remote alpine ridges. Hiking into the Pemajuasa wilderness today, visualize the amazing change in the surrounding landscape in less than 100 years. Notice the well-graded trail and railroad ties under your feet and imagine the East Branch and Lincoln Railroad that ran up the valley until 1948, carrying workers in and millions of logs out to the mill in Lincoln. Hear the chug of the locomotive, the ring of the axe, and the voices of French-Canadian loggers who spent long winters in remote logging camps. Picture the gradual abandonment of those camps after World War II as the land came under Forest Service management and the construction of hiking shelters in many of the clearings where the logging camps had been. Imagine the change once again as the forest recovered and the area was designated wilderness in 1984, resulting in the removal of many of those shelters. These changes are all parts of our White Mountain heritage. Put yourself in the place of one of the hundreds of young workers in the Civilian Conservation Corps camps across the forest during the Great Depression having left his home and family in the city to earn a living wage building many of the roads, trails, campgrounds, and attractions we use and value today. As you enjoy your visit to the White Mountain National Forest, take from the history of this place a sense of connection to all those who have come before. We hope you see yourself as a part of their legacy. Visit, enjoy, photograph, and reflect. But please remember that these are special and fragile places, and federal laws prohibit the disturbance of these sites and the removal of artifacts. Please help protect these non-renewable resources and preserve them for the benefit of future generations by leaving them as you find them. So, did you guess how much of New Hampshire was cleared of trees by the 1830s? At the height of sheep farming, as much as 80% of New Hampshire was cleared farmland. 25% of northern New Hampshire was farmed by the mid-19th century, with open pasture even up to the summit of some mountains. In comparison, today only 1% of the northern part of the state is agricultural land. Many parts of the White Mountain National Forest were once farmed. When you come across a stone wall high up on the side of a mountain, remember the farmer who stacked each stone by hand and recognize the exceptional resiliency of the forest to recover from changing uses. From Native American hunting and fishing grounds, 19th century agricultural land, vast unregulated logging operations at the turn of the 20th century, and today's National Forest popular recreation destination set in a wealth of sustainably managed natural and cultural resources. As you experience the White Mountain National Forest, remember the people who shaped it in the past, as well as those who will enjoy it in the future.